Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with more Valentine cards. This time more more on the traditional side, in a sense. Um, this is for this week's color throwdown challenge. And everything just kind of lined up perfectly between the colors and what I already wanted to do and use and all the things. So I have the Forever Yours stamp set from Simon's Stamp. And I took this one um, rose and rosebud image and I'm stamping it onto some Canson XL watercolor paper. And I messed it up. <laughs> Happens. Paper's double-sided. Flip it over. Stamp on the other side. Whatevs. Not too worried about it. So happens a lot. A lot. So this time I'm not heat embossing this image. Just because. You know, I, I've I've made... I've said it in many videos. It's just, it's a force of habit. I do like heat embossing my images, especially when I'm doing any form of watercolor because the raised edges means I don't have to be so careful. And yeah, it's like my little security blankie. But for whatever reason, I just wasn't in the mood for that with this. I was like, nope, I'm just going to stamp them. So I stamped this and I did it twice because this panel was big enough. So I was like, why not? So I stamped it with the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And then to color them, I'm going to use some of these Lindy's Magical Powders. Now, I've already done a couple videos using these ones. I did a video swatching them. That'll be linked. All of those videos will be in my Shimmer Powder playlist because I have done a lot of videos over the years. And I've done this with the Nouveau Shimmer Powders too. Um, people have been asking, like, what's the difference? Uh, they're the same thing, technically. The only, it's just it's colors and containers that's different, really. Um, I love them both. That's, yeah, I, 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 you guys know, I like to have all the colors. I like to have them all. <laughs> so I haven't painted with these ones yet, but after I did this video, I, yeah, they're, they're, they're the same thing. They're just all, you know, different colors. Everything's wonderful. So with these, all I did was scoop out the little bits of powder onto just a palette and then I put the leads back in the containers because I've, I've already knocked over one of these containers once. Oy. That's my only peeve with these ones is these containers and, and a clumsy person like me. Not the greatest thing, but I'm working harder on just, just being a little more careful and making sure not to sneeze when the containers are open. So anyway, anyway, um, this is actually a Christmas set. These, the, the colors, um, so there are three of them. Are They're from the Jingle Bells set and it was just kind of perfect because I was like "Ooh, this Rudolph's nose red perfect for the um petals and then there's two greens in here there's a um frosty forest green which is a lighter green and then a, an unbelievably deep 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 dark green it's called frolic in the forest green it almost looks black it actually has a lot of blue in it so I decided I'd get fancy and mix the two greens together so all I was doing was I would just get um little sections of this image wet with just clean water and then I was picking up the shimmer powder with a second brush and painting with it like very very simple and as um the entire image becomes you know painted it all just comes together and of course at the very end I'll turn my flashlight on and actually show just like the shimmer because there's a lot and it's it's fun these were fun they painted with just great um you can use anything I've, I've shown it in tons of videos you know I've used watercolors and markers and inks and distress inks and oxides and shimmer powders and you know pretty much anything can be a color medium if you try hard enough <laughs> so these were fun though and I personally am not a big especially when it comes to valentine cards I don't really go very like traditional you know, like red roses and that sort of a thing however that was the color throwdown challenge this week it was actually it was red green and brown and Two, there is something about red roses. You know, they're just, it's like, it's like a classic in a sense. So I am glad I, I did these in red because normally I probably would have done them in like bright hot pink or, or rainbow or, you know. So for the leaves, did the exact same thing. I would just get the area wet with clean water and then I would drop in the lighter green and then I'd come in with a bit, just a little tiny bit of that super, super dark green the the frolic in the forest green it's called um because yeah that one is intense and the thing to note too with shimmer powders um you guys can't really see it in like this video 
I could see it in real life, but I find, and that's the fun thing for me, um, is because you're dealing with like pigmented and shimmery powders. It's interesting sometimes how they can look if you're doing something like this, where you're doing two images side by side. Um, because a lot of these, these collections, a lot of these different containers actually contain multiple color pigments. You know, that's what makes the end result like that super super dark green there's actually like a lot of like a navy blue pigment it's very intense the other green has lighter greens are probably like there's little bits of yellow in there too different things like that and it's just interesting when you actually you know when you paint with them versus when you um sprinkle them and spray them how the different colors you know will pop out that you're just not expecting and i just find it fun so that's why i like shimmer powders and why i have three dozen somewhere on their videos <laughs> it'll be in the playlist at the end like I said so anyway once I was finished painting these I used the coordinating wafer dies to die cut them and just taped those wafer dies into place with a little bits of washi tape so that they do not shift when I run them through my die cut machine and then after I die cut these I decided I wanted to do just a little bit of hot foiling not a lot but I was just kind of thinking about like the layout and different things. So I pulled out this, um, this is the Essential Glimmer Circles Hot Foil Plate. This is from Spellbinders. I purchased these forever ago. Um, there's like, there's circles and they're all in dots, which are really fun, but there's like circles and rectangles and ovals. And yeah, I got these forever ago. I haven't used them. And now that I'm getting, you know, more and more comfortable foiling, getting good results, love, I've been reaching for them more. So. I pulled out one of the circles and I pulled out some, is this espresso bean? I think it's called. Um, yes. Espresso bean glimmer foil. My original plan was just use gold because especially when I'm hot foiling, I'm always like, Ooh, gold. <laughs> but because of the color challenge, I was like, Ooh, I have this dark brown foil. Why not? So one of the big things, and I've mentioned this in recent videos is taping like the foil and the, even the foil plate, like to my cardstock. That has been helping a lot, especially with the overfoiling. I it's happening less and less, and it just keeps everything in place. Things don't shift because even when you run it like slowly through your die cut machine, sometimes you know they like things like to move around, and you end up with like crappy results. So far, this has been working. So I foiled this onto just Simon's 120 pound smooth white cardstock. I had you know taped the the little foil plate and the foil into place with something like this with, with, you know, all that leftover foil I, and same with like pieces that I cut off that I don't need. I, you can't see it on screen, but I have just a little mug kind of up in the upper right corner there. And that's where I've been putting just my extra foil pieces that I can use for future projects. You know, when I need a little sentiment or a little like small thing that's getting foiled, etc. I'll just, I can, you know, rifle through my little mug of these little leftover foil bits and I just use those up so and especially with something like this where I'm just using that little bit of a circle and everything is left over yeah I just throw that piece in that little mug I can use it next time so foiled both of these pieces of cardstock with that the espresso bean hot glimmer foil it's not super reflective like the gold and some of the you know the metallics etc and on camera it doesn't really look like anything but in real life it's pretty. It's just a nice dark brown. And there's that letter press, like, because, you know, it's indented into the cardstock. And it's just, it's just nice. I like it. <laughs> so after I did the foiling, I die cut my sentiments. I used the CZ Design uh, Swoopy Love You Wafer Die. This does have an outline as well. I didn't use that. I used just the word. And I die cut it from um, some dark brown cardstock as well as some brown glitter cardstock. This was Simon's um, bronze glitter cardstock. And again, this is something I normally wouldn't have done. Just force a habit, I would have done this in gold. You know, I would have stacked the layers with like white cardstock and done either gold glitter or like gold foil cardstock for the sentiment. And that would look fabulous too. But this is why I like the color throwdown challenge because it gets me doing things I don't normally do or thinking about colors in ways I normally wouldn't. Because yeah, thinking about a card like this, I would not think to add brown. It's just not, I would, I would have done gold. And, but either one would look great, but I'm glad the brown was part of the challenge because I like it. And sometimes it really makes me think, you know, it's like, how am I going to incorporate this color? Mm. So anyway, after I stacked my sentiments and I just used craft tacky glue for that, 
I have little panels of just white cardstock that I'm going to put on the inside of my card. And I also just cut down a couple of my like grid um, scrap papers that I use, you know, for inking and different things, just so that I could ink up this stamp again. I'm inking it up with Simon's Mocha positively saturated ink, but I don't want to stamp that right on these panels for the inside because it's a little too dark and I want to be able to write over it. So I'm stamping it first on the scrap paper and then without re-inking the stamp, I'm stamping that onto the inside or onto this panel. So I'm still getting that, you know, darker brown color, but it's much lighter, you know, so it's not so intense and I can write over it easily and it's good to go. So after I did that onto those panels, I took a sentiment from that same stamp set, lined that up, and I'm stamping that with that VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. So once I've got that stamped, for my card base, I actually used red cardstock. I was going to do white, but then decided to kind of pull in more of the red. So I'm going to adhere my florals and my sentiments first to these panels that I had used the um, Glimmer Hot Foil like circle on. So I'm just adhering everything with craft tacky glue. So I adhered my little rose image and then I'm going to adhere the sentiment right on top of that. And then I'll put some acrylic blocks on top just to hold everything down so that everything has a couple minutes to dry and actually adhere to the cardstock. And then the back of these panels, I used Simon's Big Mama foam tape so that I've got a little bit of dimension, but it's not going to add a whole ton of bulk. So cover the back of these panels with that foam tape. Once those are um, complete, I'm going to start assembling the cards. And like I said, I did um, red cardstock for my card bases just to, again, pull in a little bit more of that red color. Plus, again, it's a little more, you know, traditional. So adhered the panels to the inside with craft tacky glue. And then I can peel off the backing from the card fronts and adhere those to the card bases. And as always, <laughs> you can leave it here. But I'm going to add a little bit of bling because of course I have matching bling. And I have hearts. Heart bling. Best stuff ever. I've got these little, um, they're cinnamon red hearts from Trinity Stamps. They do look like candy. Do not eat them don't eat them. <laughs> but they look like candy. So I have some of those and I also have some bronzed brown uh, like halfback pearls. So I kind of arrange those around both of these cards. I do one, figure out the placement, and then I just copy it on the second one or third or fourth, however many I'm doing. So once I've you know figured out my little bits of placement, I'm going to adhere these into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue just using my embellishment wand. So I'll get these all adhered and then I'm going to pair these cards with some dark chocolate envelopes from Simon as well. I'll just pull in that final little bit of brown and these cards will be complete. And like I said, I'm going to turn the flashlight on my phone to actually show the shimmer on these um, roses because... Yeah, you can see it in real life, but of course video is just like, eh. You can see it a little bit here, but now you can really see it. Love. <laughs> so, as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In my blog post, I will link to the Color Throwdown Challenge. It's just an open challenge we do every week, and anyone can play along. It's just for fun and to get you, you know, thinking outside the box, get inspired, all that fun stuff. So I will have links to all of that, along with, of course, all the supplies I used. That'll be in the description box below the video if you are interested. So you just got to expand it, and it's all there for you, including links to everything, my social medias, my website, all that stuff. So check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos. Thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you haven't. I'd very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.